Hello everybody, and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian, and I'm here to bring you the first part in a series where we will examine the constellations visible in our night sky a little more in depth than we usually get to in our planetarium shows. One of the things that brings me great joy in astronomy is understanding a little more deeply the things I'm seeing in the sky, and I hope that this series can inspire that understanding and joy in you too. This series is not going to focus on the mythology of the constellations. The mythology is fun and can tell you a lot about the humans who created the constellations, but I want to spend more of our time talking about the stars and objects themselves. The goal is that by watching this series, you will be able to go outside and identify the constellations and appreciate the grandeur of the universe beyond just the pretty pictures. To kick things off, I'm going to start with the most important constellation in the Northern Hemisphere, Ursa Major, or the Great Bear. Ursa Major is a fantastic tool to find other constellations in the night sky, and is particularly helpful in the spring. Because Ursa Major is frequently the starting place for these star-hopping adventures, there isn't really any good trick to finding it, you just kind of have to learn to recognize it. However, seven stars in Ursa Major are quite bright, and form a very recognizable pattern that we call the Big Dipper. These seven stars look a little like a spoon with a bent handle. three stars in the handle, and four in the cup. They are bright enough that they are still visible in areas with moderate light pollution. In spring, the Big Dipper will be high in the sky after sunset. The rest of Ursa Major is formed from the fainter stars around the Big Dipper. The stars of the Big Dipper form the bear's long tail and hindquarters, and the body extends out from the cup to a pointy face. The bear has three legs below its body. While the Big Dipper is quite easy to find, the rest of Ursa Major can be more difficult if there is considerable light pollution. Let's take a closer look at some of the things that you can see in Ursa Major with the naked eye. The paws of the Great Bear are interesting because they appear to follow a repeating pattern of two stars. These are called the Three Leaps of the Gazelle because they reminded people of the leaping motions of Gazelle. While the stars appear close together, they are not actually bound to each other by gravity and are not binary stars. A trickier star is up in the handle of the Big Dipper. The middle star of the handle is named Mizar. And sharp-eyed observers may spot a faint second star nearby. This is Alcor. Mizar and Alcor are a visual double star, meaning that with sharp vision, you can see what appears at first glance to be a single star is actually two. It's not clear yet if Mizar and Alcor are a binary, that they are gravitationally bound to orbit each other, but recent discoveries have proved that both Mizar and Alcor are themselves multiple stars. Mizar has three faint companion stars, and Alcor has one. If Mizar and Alcor are gravitationally bound, that would make them a six-star system. Ursa Major is home to many distant galaxies that can be seen through amateur telescopes. If you connect a line from the bottom star in the cup of the Big Dipper nearest the handle, to the star in the top of the cup furthest from the handle, and extend that line by about the distance between those stars again, you can find two galaxies that are close together. Messier 81, sometimes called Bode's Galaxy, and Messier 82, sometimes called the Cigar Galaxy, are close enough to each other to see in the same telescope. M81 is a spiral galaxy, 
similar in shape to our own Milky Way galaxy, but about half the size. M82 is usually called an irregular galaxy, with no well-defined shape, but recent discoveries indicated that M82 may actually be a spiral galaxy that has been distorted. M82 is also undergoing a spike in the formation of stars within that galaxy. It's thought that a close gravitational interaction with M81 sent gas and dust falling into the core regions of M82, sparking this burst in stellar formation. This same interaction is responsible for deforming M82's shape. While the galaxies look close together in a telescope, they are visually separated by 130,000 light years. You could fit the entire Milky Way galaxy between them. Many galaxies are visible in this constellation because when you look towards Ursa Major, you are looking up out of the disk of the Milky Way galaxy. In fact, even the dark areas of the sky can be hiding galaxies. The Hubble Space Telescope turned its attention towards a region near the Big Dipper for over 100 hours. The area appears dark and empty through even large telescopes, and it's remarkably small, much smaller than the circle drawn on screen. It's about the area of the opening of a straw held at arm's length. And in that region of sky, this is what Hubble saw. Every point of light you see on the screen is an entire galaxy, some 10,000 of them, hidden in an area of the sky the size of a tennis ball held a football field away from you. Imagine this in every direction all around you all the time. The universe must have a tremendous number of galaxies in it. Scientists now estimate that our universe has something like 200 billion galaxies each with nearly half a trillion stars. Turns out the universe is kind of a big place. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and look for Ursa Major. Try to see if you can spot Mizar and nearby Alcor in the handle of the Big Dipper. And consider for a moment those countless galaxies that remain unseen in the vast universe that stretches out before you. That's it for today. Next time, we'll start using the Big Dipper to find some other constellations. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies.